Hi, this is Stacy with Gooseberry Bridge Farm, and today I'm going to do another garden update. So I'm going to give you a quick look at this jungle. It's nice today, only a high of 83, and sometimes it's sunny and sometimes it's cloudy, so it's warm but not too horrible. And I am working on cleaning up these raised beds. If you've watched my previous videos, you know we had onions in them, and um, we had radishes and carrots. These are mostly carrots. There's a few radishes left. There's a cabbage moth caterpillar on the radish. I'm just gonna step on him. Um, I've been feeding them to the chickens, but here we are. So this is the radishes. They've all gone to seed. There's tons of seeds in there. I could save seed. I could eat the pods. I could do all sorts of things with them, but I am feeding them to my pigs because I don't have time right now. And I need to get this cleaned up because the carrots are getting pushed over by the radish radish pod plants. They're huge. These radishes. I'll see if I can show you one. Nope. So I mean this one is I mean you can see how thick the stalk was. I cut the plant off the top, but I'll show you one of these when I get to them. I've got some flowers in here. These are covered in bees. The bees really like the radish flowers, so I hate to take them out because of that. And there you go. You can see the bees hopping all over the place. Um but they need to get out of here. They're sucking up too much water. The beds are too dry. They just can't keep up with it. Okay, that's much better. I don't know if you can even tell I did anything, but here is my wheelbarrow full of radish tops. And I also cleaned out some of my older Chinese broccoli. So the other thing we did today um, <coughs> I can't remember if we went over this last time. This was my garlic. It's all inside now, which I guess we did in the video where I showed the onions. Curing, um, the garlic was in there too. That was all here. This was covered just now um, with feed sacks, paper feed sacks. And then the weave fabric that the garlic was in. And then this area was onions and some zucchini plants. The zucchini plants are in rough shape. Um, several of them have already died. So, and the onions are pulled up now. So we just covered this, pulled out all of the grass as much as possible, covered it um, just to get started with trying to smother out some of that Bermuda grass, which is impossible, but we're trying. Um, this is all the okra. I've got some stuff I'm gonna put in here, probably some peppers and Maybe some sunflowers, I'm not sure. The peppers, it's super late to plant peppers now, it's mid-July, but I have them left over um, and why not, right? So might as well see if they do anything rather than just sitting in the trays till they eventually die. Um, the okra's all looking good. You see there's another dead squash plant because it's that time of year. Those are all my um, San Marzano tomatoes. They're kind of hanging in there, right, having a couple different issues. There's one over here that's wilted and I don't know why. A couple of them are dealing with blossom end rot, but the rest aren't, so that's kind of strange. Uh, one at the end over there where the gap is um, just hasn't grown at all. This is all of my, my main zucchini bed. Um, there's, they're doing all right. I mean, I've lost um, probably this plant that plant and one down there um, to vine borers or squash bugs or cucumber beetles or whatever. I've had some other vine borers get in through my, I have been spraying with BT to kill them before they get into the plants. Sometimes they get in anyway. And I t dug two of them out of plants this morning. I'm trying to find one of those plants. Um, it's not that one, this one because it's got new dirt on it now. I, uh, so it's coming down the right way. Anyway, I dug into it, got the caterpillar out, and then buried it with new dirt. And then there's another one over here. So the, the, the wound on the plant 
is covered up. I'm not sure if that's really gonna help, but here we are. This area was also onions. I need to get that covered before it turns to weeds. Um, and these are potatoes that are really close to ready. Um, purple fingerlings and uh, the other ones. Kennebecs. That's what we have there. Our other Kennebecs were harvested from the back of the garden. And you can see this area looks really different now. This was where all the peas were in my previous videos. And now you can fully see all the tomatoes. Peas are coming out. It's been a slow process and I will show you in more detail, but this is only about maybe a third of what was here before. So I should show you part of why the peas are coming out. They are looking dead. Some of them are just crunchy. Hi, Teddy. I'm just taking a video. Some of them are crunchy. Some of them are just super covered in powdery mildew like this. It's gross. So they do have some peas on them that are big. These aren't quite big enough to like shell. I don't think anyway. Yeah, they are. Either way, I'm, um, I saved some of them, but most of what's on these plants is going to uh, my pigs. So the first row, if you remember, was um, the one I was really worried about because the tomatoes are still small. They were shaded and competing for resources with the peas and I think that's why they're still small. They also went in really small and I probably should have put bigger plants in here to compete with the peas. But they're okay, they're doing all right. I mean, there's no fruit at all in that one, but whatever. This one only has one, but we have all of these really nice looking plants that were also planted with peas and they look awesome. And they're up to the top of the trellis in some places. Um, let's come around the corner. Here we go. So yeah, like look at all these tomatoes. They're looking good. We've already been picking some slicers off of these. The Black Beauties, Black Tulas, and Cherokee Purples have already started to ripen, and a Blue Beauty. I don't really know why the dark ones are, oh, we're all blurry, are ripening. Anyway, and I've also got some stuff interplanted with these. This was peas, um, but since there's space between the peas, I also put in basil. So there's basil there, there. Um, that's a marigold. Um, there's dill that's kind of sad looking and more stuff like that as you go down. This side doesn't have quite as much, but it also has some tiny basil. Um, there's a bean plant, a uh, random vining Malabar spinach, and some other stuff like that. Just mix in. Oh, I need to get this tucked in. So if you ever use cattle panel trellises, you really just have to stay on top of weaving the plants in as they grow. This is the boys' raised bed, just with our native soil from the driveway project. Um, and it's planted with peppers and um, basil. This is all basil, lime basil or lemon basil all these peppers they're doing pretty good they've got a few tomato plants back there um and some sunflowers and it's i'm kind of shocked at how well this is all doing okay neglected cold frame more tomatoes so these tomatoes are where the onions were we just finished pulling the onions this morning there's some more dill hanging in the aisle um we're just tucking in the tomatoes. I went through and pruned them all uh, this morning. Not the best pruning job, but I at least cut off any leaves with um, yellow spots or I missed one like this. I was cutting off anything that looked like it was starting to get a little fungusy or old, flea beetle damage, anything like that. It helps keep the rest of the plant healthy. There's one of my hybrid cherry tomatoes. I usually grow all heirloom varieties, but gotta admit that this is pretty fun. 
This one had a bunch of caterpillars on it today. And I can't keep my camera focused. These are blue beauty tomatoes. This one is doing awesome. This is what I would want all my tomato plants to look like about this time of year, just covered in these um, growing green fruits. But that first row is a little rough looking. We've got more peppers in here. They're doing really well. Tons of peppers on some of them. Some of them don't have as many, but when you plant well over a hundred peppers, see this one's just covered in flowers, then it doesn't matter if they're all producing at once. Let me see what this is. This is a Thai chili, so I don't need to worry about that. It'll make plenty. What do you need, buddy? Oh, is that the plum? Yeah. Oh, there's Teddy. Come out back here and find me and you can show me. I have to show you these uh, shishito peppers. Yeah. Oh, Teddy's plum. Let me see that. Wow, look at that. That came off the plum tree in our front yard. It's never really made plums before, but it's um, because it didn't have anything to pollinate it. But we think it having more beehives this year that the bees got, got the pollen from our other plum trees across the property and brought it over or something, because we got a bunch more plums this year. But we are actually in the process of planting a, a baby plum tree next to our big plum tree. Here, I'll show you the trees. That big tree there, this one, is our uh, mature plum tree that doesn't usually make anything because it doesn't have an, another to cross-pollinate it. We just planted two sour cherry trees next to it, and then we're gonna put a plum tree on the other side, a wild plum. It should be enough. Oh, there's a frog. That, I thought it was a snake. <laughs> okay, I need to show you the shishito peppers. Look at this. They're just covered in peppers. And these are really good, just um, blistered as people say it. I need to just keep picking them and eating them. I'm not really sure how I can get it there to preserve those. I'm gonna try blistering them and freeze drying them and seeing if it, um, if it makes like a, there's so many bees on these, I'm kind of afraid to walk through and brush up against the flower. This is all basil with flowers. I know people freak out about, oh, the basil, it went to, it bolted. Um, yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna start harvesting this soon. We'll just cut off the flowers um, and use the leaves and they're fine. They taste really good. Um, we will be freeze drying a lot making some uh, basil salt, freeze-dried basil. I want to try to make some lime basil oil and then make um, a basil scented lip balm. I cannot keep my camera in focus today. So all my beans are doing awesome. I picked like a crate full of beans yesterday. The raised beds are doing really good. I'll get up closer to those in a minute. I still haven't harvested all that kale. Um, my bush tomatoes are huge. The cucumbers are hanging in there. The cucumber beetle infestation that I really have pretty much, there's more basil figured out I can't do anything about. I did try Armenian cucumbers this year, which are really a type of muskmelon. Um, had I known that, I probably wouldn't have tried them, but everybody's like, oh, they make such good cucumbers and they're bigger and they, oh, they, they said they were pest resistant. As you can see, mine are dead because no pest resistance, but they do make a lot of flowers. There's bees all over them. This last one is hanging in there, so maybe it will make it through the pests, but I mean, it's covered in cucumber beetles, but it might be the only reason that my other cucumbers are still alive if the cucumber beetles actually prefer it. So down this row is tomatoes and cucumbers. There's a huge tomato in here. Oh, look at this. Look at this one. It's giant. It's bigger than my hand. And uh, anyway, there's cucumber plants. There's nasturtiums in here. Uh, there's a watermelon covered in baby, uh, sugar baby watermelons. I really hope this whole video is not ruined by camera focus issues. Oh, there's a baby watermelon. Oh. My hand's super dirty. Watermelon, spider webs. This is a climbing nasturtium, so it's actually going up the trellis now. 
the leaves and the flowers are edible. I want to make some nasturtium salt this year also. Though I don't really expect that one to be a big seller. It's basically would be like a peppery flavored salt. There's a sunflower growing almost to the top of the trellis. There's another one over there and over there. There's a bean out here. Those are yard long Thai beans or something. I don't remember exactly which variety they are, but I've got a bunch of them planted in here with this other stuff. I've also got loofahs in here. This is a loofah plant coming up through this tomato. Um, oh, there it goes all the way up there. That, interplanting all this stuff, it looks like a lot, but, and I know that my cucumbers and some of the squash plants won't make it. So you plant a whole bunch, or I, I do, I plant a whole bunch. There's another bean up there. And then I don't have to worry about the trellis being all empty um, later on. And this right here, this wall of tomato is my spoon tomato plant. They are the cutest thing ever. Here, let me show you. Look at this. This is as big as they get. They're just tiny. This this one is starting to ripen already. They're, they're small. I, I love them. They're so good. They're like perfect for salads. And there's a bean growing up through the middle of that. This down here is all uh, butternut squash that doesn't want to climb the trellis, which is over here. I'm going to keep kind of directing it up. Hopefully it'll come up eventually, but there's also another loofah. So by the end of the summer, that'll just cover everything. And this zucchino, zucchino ram cancante is taking over all this. Um, these are the babies of that. I usually pick most of them and eat them like zucchini and then let a few grow. I think my plants, those look normal, but I have some that are really short this year, more like a butternut squash. They're over there somewhere. But they, um, I think they cross-pollinated with the butternut squash last year. 